tree and shaping parts of it so that the roots act as blades. The ash is favoured because it's so resilient. For the same reason, it makes the best swingle tree. It has a marvellous springy quality. Country people say, you think it was alive. Edward and Michael Brennan have shrewd eyes for the best makings of a hurl. The old way of felling the tree was to dig around its roots and using a mattock and axe, cut through the taproot. Today, the chainsaw is used as its tip cuts down at an angle into the roots. This is not possible with a handsaw. The ancient way of unselving a tree still persists. However, even into this intimate task, the machine is making its way. That's not too bad now. Clean enough. No, I have to go to sleep. Inch sawmills on the River Nore near Kilkenny town. The invention of the wheel was a mighty step forward. And in the water mill, the natural and man-made are beautifully fused. At the end of this power sequence is a modern wheel, the circular saw. Liam Brett is the third generation to own and run inch sawmills. His son is the fourth. Once upon a time, a traveller in Wales was amazed because he saw hardly any ash or willow trees. And this was before the days when the woods were felled for pit props. He inquired and was told that the ash and the willow had been devoured by the passion for bandy, the Welsh form of hurling. Ash is scarce in Ireland because it burns so readily and so cleanly, and because the forestry department do not include it in their scheme of things. This scarcity is among the reasons for the high cost of hurleys. So is the amount of patient labour the craft demands. Hurls are being made from fibreglass and plastic, but they lack the spring and resilience of the wood. Makers are few, and most, like the Brennans in Kilkenny, live in areas where the game is strong. John Surlis is an exception. He plies his craft in modest Raiden, County Roscommon, a county where Gaelic football is king. Now, how would you know a good hurley? It's good and strong. Yeah. And the green running all the way. Down, yeah. round about that way. And yeah. when you get it coming all the way straight and around about in the horseshoe shape, yeah. that's a good hurley because when you hit the ball, if it was straight, that piece would break off yeah. and all you had left was the straight bit then. Mm. You'd be shouting for a hurley. <laughs> October till March, and the sap is in the center of the dip, mm. and down on the root, and it won't take so long to season. If you cut it in summer time, it'll be all sap and soft. 
And you never heard of Christy Ring? No. Well, he was supposed to be the best curler in Ireland. And he, he died a few years ago. Oh, boys, I think it's all right. We'll finish it on the grey mare. John uses the Cooper's mare, a medieval type of vice. He uses, too, the spoke shave, another instrument long known to those who shave things with loving sensitivity. Nope. All I'll have to do is take the track in the saw. Easy to grade, mm. all the way down, look, and round about. Right, mm. I'm tracking the saw off for now, as the sawness. We're down to the right side. What's the sandpaper there for grounded? The sandpaper? Yeah. Well, it gives a grip. When I lean, I press down on that, mm. the sandpaper gives it a rough grip. Yeah. And if that didn't, if I didn't have sandpaper on it, I'd have to do this with the saw to roughen that so it wouldn't be slippery. And the same here. But the sandpaper is rough and it's able to hold it. Now, mm. now look, you couldn't pull it out. Mm -hmm. The Butler Castle overlooks the River Nore. Kilkenny Town is the home of Ramy Dowling maker of the well-known star Hurley. He gets his ash trees planked by Liam Brett. His son Tom marks out a batch of hurls. They're made in six different sizes from the 28 inch junior hurl for seven and eight year olds up to the 38 inch senior hurl. A map of the distribution of hurling would show a remarkable fact. It's played almost entirely in the more fertile parts of the country, and few parts are more fertile than Kilkenny, and it's the only county where hurling predominates almost to the exclusion of Gaelic football. Ramy Dowling is among its folk heroes. He was a goalkeeper, an art for which the county is especially famous. He belongs to a great line that includes Jimmy O'Connell, Ollie Welsh and Noel Skeen. A hurling goalkeeper's margin of error is like that of a batsman in cricket. Tantalising, the tiniest error can undo him. It's among the reasons for Ramy Dowling's expertise in the making of hurls. A keeper uses two kinds of hurls one for a general play and another for taking a free stroke. The difference between the former and the latter is almost as great as that between the modern hurl and the ancient come on. It's in a way truly an art, like the bow makers of medieval times, vital to the warfare of their tribe. Shaping the hurl on the bandsaw is called sliding. Ramey's sons, Tom and Brian, carry on the craft. Ramey's wife, Breda, is the daughter of the late Tom Neary, the hurl maker, who started making hurls in 1921. In the old days, they looked for an ash plant growing out of a bank with a nice curve to its roof. Ramey also made hurls from white elm. 
but the handle had to be insulated as one got a sting when one walloped the ball. Willow is also used. When Ramey has completed the sliding, his son Brian takes over. This is the same job that John Surlis was doing on the Cooper's mare, except Brian uses a bench stop. The tools are similar. Come on is the Gaelic word for a hurl. Its root is cowl, the word that in several languages denotes bent or crooked. The original hurley may have been nothing more than a shepherd's crook. Today's hurl is the product of generations of experience and experimentation. And the experimentation goes on. Even the concept of a single piece of ash is no longer sacred. Some players, indeed, prefer a hurl with a segmented blade. Ger Fennelly, the brilliant Kilkenny man, drops in with a broken hurl for repair. Hi, oh, Brian. I'm Ger, how are you keeping? Good. You have a problem? I've been having a problem with the last one this match. You want a piece in it, I see? Yeah, one piece. Okay. okay. You'll want it for the weekend, anyway? Uh, we have a match on Sunday, you know, if you could have it for Sunday. Oh yes, I, I'll have it Friday evening, mm -hmm. if you'll be passing by with you. Should I call about three or four o'clock then, please? Oh, that's great, that's great. I'll have it then. Okay, okay then. Okay, Jer. Yeah. All the best. Brian will have to cut and glue a piece of ash to the damaged hurl. about it a mystique that Gaelic football cannot match. One of the reasons is that it's the more skillful game, and part of the reason is that it's ancient. Modern football is only as old as inflatable rubber, and in some parts of the country you will hear the older generation say, football is not much of a game, the good people never played it. The good people are the fairies, and the reference is to the frequency with which hurling occurs in the tales about them. But the hurling in the fairy tales was Kamanacht, the ancient game of the narrow stick. As distinct from the hurl, it had no boss or blade. It's often referred to as winter hurling, the other form, summer hurling. Summer hurling was like cricket, in that it was closely associated with the big house. Landlords kept teams of hurlers, just as their counterparts across the Irish Sea kept teams of cricket players. This inter-house rivalry was intense, and it was common in 18th century newspapers to see advertisements for hurling matches. The act of union and the decline of the big house brought this kind of competition to an end, and organised hurling languished until the coming of the GAA. Brian has to make his own two-headed nails. Not so long ago, Cooper's nails would have been available for the job. The hurling heartlands of today are almost all territories where once the summer game and the big house flourished. And all but one of these heartlands are in the southern half of the country. The exception is North Antrim, a reminder that the narrow sea between there and Scotland is less a boundary than a roadway. The foundation of the Gaelic Athletic Association had a curious sequel. The older form of the game soon disappeared. 
It is sometimes said that the GAA gave official recognition to the newer form, but perhaps it had no choice. Gaelic football grew in popularity like grass in a showery May and in many parts of the country seems to have supplanted winter hurling. Winter hurling survives now in the Scots Highlands in the form of shinty. It's a very different game from modern hurling and attempts to create a compromise form have failed. Sullivan, the celebrated Gaelic poet of the 18th century, wrote a poem about the ideal spade. And a man will cherish his spade or his hayfork or his shlaan as he would a hurl or a musical instrument, because, as we would say, it suits him. It makes his work easier. And in the same way, some men are loath to discard a damaged hurl. It may have a special feel which they fear they can never recapture, or they may believe that it is their lucky hurl. And thus they will get the hurl repaired, even though this breaches the sacred tradition that a hurl must be a single piece. A band of metal also helps to strengthen the hurl. Brian Cody is another of today's young lions. He's Kilkenny's captain. His team are about to play Cork in the All-Ireland final. The prize is Hurling's Holy Grail. How about that one, then? Here's another one, Brian. Another one. Brian. I'll never make me mind up. Huh? That's a grand for Ram, it is. Yes, yeah. It feels very like the other one, this one yeah. here. Yeah. A very similar type of hurls. Great grain in it again. And yeah, I like to handle, like to grip. Yes. I suppose I better make up your mind anyway, Amy. Yes, Gale. yes, right <laughs> now. Well, that's up to you. Suppose I took these two, how would that yeah, be? Yeah, that'll do, Grand Brian. That'll oh, do, Grand. Great, Ramey, or as long as they're lucky, that's the main thing. Hopefully, they're two yeah. grand sticks. The firm of O'Neill's in the heart of Dublin has been renowned for the making of schlithers, the Gaelic word for the hurling ball, for a very long time. Liam Dargan uses all the techniques of a saddler and harness maker. The thread he prepares for sewing has a needle on each end and must be rolled and waxed to make it waterproof. Schlitter almost certainly comes from litter, the old word for hair, and the typical hurling ball in older days was of horse hair in a pigskin casing. Not long ago, schlitters were the colour of natural leather, brown. White leather, a new introduction, makes the schlitter easier to see, particularly when practising at dusk. The leather palms he puts on prevents the sewing thread from cutting into the side of his hands when he draws the stitches tight. The modern ball is the subject of continuous experiment. The main ingredient is now cork, encased in spun yarn dipped in latex. The modern ball is more streamlined too, and its greater carry is changing the tactical shape of the game.
Such men as Liam Dargan do not see their names on the sports pages, but on the pitch they can see the effect of their handiwork. Hammering the ball rounds the joints and sets the stitches. When the cricket bat strikes the ball correctly, the meeting of willow and polished leather produces a sweet sound. So too does the wedding of Ash and Schlitter. Today is the testing time for Brian Cody and his warriors and for the hurl that Ramey Dowling and his sons wrought for them. Kilkenny meet Cork in Dublin's Croke Park for the All-Ireland Hurling Final.